Okay, so some of this video is just going to be a bit of talking about the unfortunately lame stuff in the film. So I hope you'll bear with me or pause the video and maybe stop it outright if you don't want to hear that. I will try to... Maybe I should talk about some of the cool stuff first. The knife stuff near the end is just badass. The whole castle entering, you know, the offices and taking out the hunting party with explosives, an M4 carbine, his trusty, you know, sidearm, the 45, and a sort of double barrel shotgun that just, it's, that whole bit just kicks ass. And the sort of realism of it, you know, he's not just mowing them down, he gets hit too, he's just smart enough to work Kevlar. You know, and the reason that he's successful in taking out that many people is because he starts with, you know, I don't remember if it's an anti-personnel mine or if it's Claymore. I think it might be a Claymore, like on the boat. I'm not entirely sure why the surviving Saint Son did not try to shoot him after jumping off the boat. I don't know, maybe his guns got wet or something. Gunpowder got wet. I don't know. The death of Laura Herring. Ouch. You know, just, you know, in front of the train. And the the bit with taking out Glass. Quentin Glass, you know, with the story of Bowie, or Bowie, or how you pronounce it, and throwing the knife into the table, you know, pick up the knife. Pick up the knife, or I will. You know, th that whole... It was nice to see Travolta get to be cool in this, because he just kicks so much ass as a villain, you know, as, as a real, you know, determined and off-the-wall villain, you know. I mean, if you like this and you haven't already watched it, go watch Face Off. That just... That is an entire movie of him playing that, basically. You know, because he was kind of a wimp in this, but I think that was kind of meant, you know, that was the idea, you know, saying that the high up, you know, none of the real high up crime guys were that tough, you know. I mean, did you see... Bobby or John, I don't remember. Wait, John's the father. Anyway, the surviving saint son. You know, when Frank, you know, puts the mine on his hand, you know, isometric exercise. That was not the toughest look on a guy's face that I've ever seen, you know, and yeah, you know, Mr. Saint was kind of a wimp. It, um, but yeah, and the, I'm not even sure it was a quick draw, kind of, oh wait, maybe, maybe Mr. Saint did have a gun. You'll have to bear with me, it has been a couple of hours. But yeah, you know, just drawing the gun, and bang, and gone, and then he ties him to the back of a car and drags him behind the car. And I think he blows up his own car and amongst blowing up cars. I mean, doesn't the car that Howard is being Howard Saint is being dragged behind, doesn't that blow up and, and his legs catch on fire and it looks really fake and now I'm getting into the bad stuff. Also that skull from okay, you could see it from the sky, but other than like the news choppers, that just you might want to conserve your, you know, explosives. I suppose you could argue that maybe he was doing it to, you know, make an image for himself, but then five minutes later we see him, you know, trying to kill himself, and that might also explain why he did spend all the explosives. So, 
kind of something difficult to explain on the way. Anyway, yes, I think we are... Okay, before I get into the lane, the plan, the whole thing of making it look like Quentin Glass and, you know, Mrs. Saint were having an affair, that was pretty good. I liked Mickey also. I'll admit that I actually quite liked seeing him again for as little as he was in it in Ocean's Eleven, I think was the first one. I thought that movie was okay. I didn't bother watching any of the others. I haven't given up on Soderbergh, though, because traffic rocked, and I think that's also him. Anyway, Mickey, the, you know, the, the, the torture bit also, just, you know, oh, no, no, and then he gets the, you know, popsicle in his mouth, and he looks, and he feels his back. You are not a nice person. I love that. That, that just, yeah, spot on. And, you know, using him as the spy and as the inside guy to, you know, plant that little subliminal thought of maybe something is going on between my right hand and my wife. Maybe my right hand is getting it on with my wife. That sounded less dirty in my head. Okay, no, it didn't. Anyway, the whole framing of them, and then he reveals that, you know, he throws the pictures that prove that how Glass, Quentin, was gay, and throws the other earring, you know, just telling him, nope, you were wrong. You killed your best friend, you killed your wife for nothing. And the thing with, you know, you killed my son, and then they, you know, hear an explosion. Both of them. Yeah, that was good. Also, his badass voice is much better than Christian Bale's. Anyway, the, the lame. Let's start right from the beginning. Castle as like Otto Krieg or whatever. I know it's just a very short amount of time. Maybe this is nitpicking, but the accent, the, the whole behavior, yeah, it's just irritating. Not that good of a way to introduce your lead, you know. Not bad with, you know, him then sitting up in the bed, certainly better than in Street Fighter. Ah, bad, bad movie. Anyway, but we did kind of already know, I mean, everybody already knows that he's actually Frank Castle. The... the upset speech when he confronts I think the chief of police or something okay at first it's actually pretty good upset is that the word I used to get upset when the Yankees won the World Series okay I'm doing a terrible job imitating him pardon but you know about halfway through it's still going strong but then, tell me what I'm feeling right now, because I don't know what it is. Okay, that's just bad. I mean, the delivery is bad, but it's probably because the writing, no one could make that line sound good. You know, and then you have, like, Howard Saint reacting to, you know, the, the Toros. You know, saying, should we take our business, do you want us to find another bank? And then he's like, no. And the Toru is like, okay. Yeah, okay, you know, I don't know if that's the guy's real accent, but it sounds so fake. And the whole delivery, and the sort of grin, and the... No, it's just really lame. And then the, the, I think it's the second time that Castle has done his sabotage of the business there with the boat blowing up. And then they come back and then they talk about, you know, oh, my mother used to hide all her money in a, in a mattress. And then, then the house burned down and she lost everything. Yes. That's what happens when you don't keep an eye on your money. What? 
I'm sorry, that is the worst metaphor I've heard in quite some time. Right there, that... What does... Uh, yeah. Okay, I could see if you were talking about, like, Monopoly, you know. Not the game, although it is cute with a little hat and the shoe and all. But anyway, if you were talking about, I don't want to keep all my money in one place, okay, that's one thing, and that kind of makes sense with the mattress story, but that's what happens when you don't watch your money? Anyway, the... The whole thing about them wondering, you know, is is our neighbor maybe an artist? Okay, a, a car artist? That's interesting. And I'm also not entirely sure about the line, you know, when, when Joan's former boyfriend comes around. What time is it in Hawaii? Wait, what? He's not wearing a Hawaiian shirt, unless I'm, there's something I'm completely misunderstanding here. The piercings, are they very Hawaiian? Is it the fact that he's a dude? He isn't high at the time, by the way. That line rocks. Are you high? Did you get high? Or something like that. Not right now. You know, that, that, yeah, that was good. And the fact that they kept in the torture of Spacker Dave that was really good. One thing, they should not have shown us his face afterwards. In the comics, we do not see his face uncovered after that. We just see him covered in bandages or gauze, whatever. In Danish, the word is bandages. Sue me. The... the, the yeah, in general, the, the bit with... Jones' former boyfriend. I do kind of like the bit with the butterfly knife. That is kind of nifty. And then the follow-up of sorts with Spacker Dave coming to, you know, Frank's door. Mr. Castle, we need your help because Jones' boyfriend, former boyfriend, is here again, and and he won't leave. And John, Frank, just. Slams the door in his face. Just like that. You know, I'll be there in a second. No, let me think about it. No, nothing. Just slams the door in his face. And he opens it, you know, and, and Spacker Dave is like, oh, you know, and, and then he gets into the room and it's like, oh, surprise, we made your dinner. And John is like, oh, you are gonna pay, you know, and he looks at Spacker Dave, and Spacker Dave is like a dog that went on the rug or something. Just, you know, just, that was really good. The the whole music bit during the fight, I quite liked it. I thought it a nice ironic touch to the the Russian fight. And yes, I said the the. And the whole thing with Harry Heck. Honestly, to me, when he's on screen, from the moment he enters the film to the moment he leaves it, just, yes, that is that is exactly it. You know, he enters, we have the whole El Mariachi Desperado tribute of sorts, you know, sings the song like it. Oh, that for you. I'm all saying at your funeral. You know, that whole thing. And then Frank is there waiting for the bridge to close so he can, you know, drive over it legally. And the car in the background. And it's just, wait, is there, is there actually something, you know, and it's Harry Heck. And he gets out of the car, gets out, you know, an automatic shotgun, starts shooting. And then we see what Frank was doing with the car. You know, he pulls down to cover you know, drives away, and suddenly there is one kid on this entire street who teleports away shortly after. And there's like one other car, you know, there are apparently only three cars in the entire, you know, this is where if 
this movie had a budget. It would actually... There would have been a longer chase, probably, but there would certainly have been more cars in, you know, the scene. But it worked out. You know, and then, you are a dumb son of a bitch, bringing a knife to a gunfight. You know, he whips out the big, you know... Don't remember what the gun is called. You know, big revolver, about to shoot Frank, and then... You know, and he, of course, you know, he could probably have presented a gun, but then he would have gotten shot. You know, he, he was lowering his expectations, you know, Dewey style. And then, you know, click, and then, and the guy dies in what may be the least convincing knife-throwing sequence in film history, but okay, they were on a budget. Then there are some lame lines with when Howard explains to his son, or explains, answers his son, you know. Okay, I'll admit that, you know, where's, where's Quentin? He's wrapped up in something, you know, he's, you know, in the carpet, wrapped up in the carpet. Where's, where's mom? She took the train. Um, no, she was in front of the train. She didn't take the train in any manner of the word, you know. Anyway, the backstory of Laura Herring's character isn't bad, you know, with the whole, you know, he just took her off the street, and now he's thinking maybe she was just a whore, you know. That was pretty good also. The guy getting shot with an arrow by Frank, at least one of them anyway, you can kind of tell how they did the effect. The arrow was always there, the camera was very careful about not filming that low, and then it goes down, oh wait, he got shot, you know. But it is a nice enough reveal with them, you know, him then standing there. A fall. Excuse me. How many explosives did he have? I mean, he sets up so many explosives. Anyway, in that last scene, seriously. I like the cut cut when he slices the juggler jugular on that guy with the very t twisted sort of blade you know and blood splurts up whatever and it cuts directly to you know cork going off you know that kind of you know just good very tight editing is the fact that he kills them because of their desire for more champagne some sort of anti-alcohol message? Subliminally, maybe? I'm watching you, Jonathan. Even though you're apparently not doing anything anymore, I guess they didn't think you did well enough with your first shot. I thought you did fine, anyway. That might be about what there is to say about the movie. For anyone who's watched the movie and is like, you know, considering the extended version, from what I understand, it's just plot. There's not more, like, action or violence in it, it's just more plot. So, yeah. I think that... I mean, I could, like, go over the fight between the Punisher and the Russian and talk about all the stuff that I loved, but I would be reciting the fight, basically. I would just be describing everything that goes on in the fight. I do like that they used, you know, the, the toilet thing and the refrigerator from, from the comic also. So yes, that is about it. Yes, those were my thoughts on the Punisher from 2004. I hope you enjoyed them. I'll see you next time.